What's up guys? It's a beautiful day here in Kaobang and I'm gonna do a day trip to a place called Pakbo and Pakbo is like a historical site uh, for the uh, revolutionary Ho Chi Minh and we're gonna go check it out and check out the vibes there but I managed to grab one of these first which is a, um, a taro steam bun now back in New Zealand we have steam buns but this one look at that taro and it's only like I think 40 cents so I'm gonna grab a couple of more and the outside is actually quite nice you can actually taste the taro it's like taro mixed with flour no sugar delicious anyway let's hit the road we're just passing through some of these uh, rural towns and villages you pretty much get to see uh, the same kind of brands of shops in these towns um, the really good thing though is that a lot of towns have their own specialized food so I wonder what specialty of food um, is at this town and the backdrop is pretty much the um, limestone mountains as you can see so you get to see these everywhere around um, Vietnam and they love putting their flags up outside their houses the flag with the yellow star welcome to Ha Quang that's where we're pretty much going guys up there and uh, next to this beautiful river you can see the green turquoise in it it's pretty fresh too so we're about another 30 k's away from uh, Pak Bo, which is that place in the picture. All right, we're just riding through these uh, small countryside villages. And uh, look at the scenery, man. It's quite nice with all these massive mountains and the cornfields. Northern Vietnam styles. The Chinese border is like a couple of k's away But we're not going to go near the uh, Chinese border at all We're just going to head on up to the uh, Pakbo temple and uh, pagoda and the site, the historical site But I do like the scenery here And I think that's um, the reward for coming to this place is the actual journey itself the actual journey is quite um, nature vibes and fulfilling with all the nature vibes and the other good thing is is no other tourists there's hardly any other tourists I haven't seen any buses I passed a couple of big trucks, but that's about it. But I thought the weekend there'd be lots of uh, people coming on buses to this place, but it's hardly anyone, man. I'm kind of like the only one. Kim Dong, up there on the mountain, says Kim Dong. I wonder what that means. Or Kim Zong. Looks like a D, but you've got to pronounce it differently. And uh, look at this massive homestay that they're developing. That looks so cool. Massive homestay. Pakbo homestay. Homestay Pakbo. Look at that backdrop. We have to park the bike here in this uh, car park area and I think we're going to jump on one of those vehicles to take us up to the temple um, so I'm just going to pack my lunch, get my lunch ready and stuff someone else is here but it's only a handful actually it's probably just going to be me up there anyway let's probably jump on one of those uh, Looks like a electric car.
cats quite popular here in Vietnam. Only one. Bao nhiêu tiền? I think that's parking. That's the uh, golf cart. And that's the actual ticket itself. 45 altogether. So it's 20 for the vehicle there. I don't know what that 5,000 is for. Oh, it's insurance. Wonder what the insurance is. That's weird. Uh, that's for the motorbike, 5,000. And the ticket itself to the historical site is 20,000. So 20,000 for the historical site. The rest are just, yeah, whatever. And it's from this booth over here, guys. So you park your bike over here. And when you come to this booth here and you grab your tickets, about 50,000 dong. So on the back of the entrance ticket, guys, is a map. And um, up here is the car park. And then it shows you a few places to go and walk along. And you loop right around. Um, there's the cave. Um, there's the river. And um, there's the temple. So there's a couple of places we can check out on this map. They're all in Vietnamese though, but I can pretty much understand what they are just from looking at them. All right, guys, this is the beauty of, uh, of being here by yourself. You get all the car park to yourself and all the seats. The other thing too, this road that we came on, it's called Ho Chi Minh road Ho Chi Minh road and it's the main road that runs right through Vietnam it's the main road that runs right through Vietnam 2,000 kilometers and it starts right here and it ends up down in the bottom uh, near the Mekong Delta um, we were down there a couple of years ago when I was down in Cambodia so this is the top part of the uh, road and anyway, we're now getting into the uh, puck ball area. I think I'm going to be the only one here, man. So the story goes is that in uh, 1911, Ho Chi Minh, he left Vietnam and he went to France, he went to Paris. And he stayed over Europe for about 30 years. And he met friends over there, friends like um, some of the uh, government officials. And I think he learned a lot of um, things from those friends of his. And then in 1941 he came back to Vietnam through the bottom of China which is basically the top here the top of Vietnam and he uh, first came back to this place here Puk Bo and he stayed here um, I think for a month and he lived in a cave and in the cave he um, he actually wrote poetry strategized done some art and um, I actually think this is the place where he plotted the revolution, to be honest. All right, so we are heading up this way. Okay. Thank you. I have no idea what this is or where this is, but it looks quite nice. So um, the thing is uh, that when Ho Chi Minh uh, stayed here, I think he actually plotted um, how to not overthrow 
the colonialists but try to do a compromise and by doing that compromise look at the fish that's how um, he gained the independence back for Vietnam looks like catfish the poor fish want to go over that's the thing about building dams the fish can't go back to migrate be lovely to have a swim in here though look how clear that is it's clear super clear this is all Vietnamese I have no idea what it means no idea Let's see where it goes. I think it will go to the cave. River vibes. So this actually here says that this is the part where Ho Chi Minh uh, done fishing. He went fishing here. You can see all the mosquitoes down there. Actually, they look like water striders. But there's like sand flies and mosquitoes all around me here. Lucky I've got some insect repellent on. But look at the green turquoise of this water. And you're not allowed to swim in it, unfortunately. But no one's here, right? No one's here, come on. You can see all the water striders down there. They kind of look like frogs. Alright guys, so we're heading up this way, up this hill, about another 60 meters. We've walked about a K into the forest. I'm not quite sure what's up here. Um, it's in Vietnamese and I can't translate it. But um, we'll have a look and check it out. And um, man, it's getting really humid um, under all these trees in here. And uh, lots of mosquitoes about, but uh, let's go and check out the vibes here, eh? Guys. We are here, border belt, so the border is just over here, Chinese border, and this, if I'm right, is the place where Ho Chi Minh stayed between the 28th of January 1941 and the 7th of February 1941. So they've made like a little house or shack. This is where he stayed. In here. There's no one in here, just me. They've got electricity running here. Corn. Looks like the bedroom. Ho Chi Minh's bedroom. The lounge, so this looks like the lounge table. There's the TV looking out there into nature. This looks like another bedroom, all made out of bamboo. Looks like they've preserved it. The fireplace, or the kitchen, do all the cooking. This is the bantu, they do all the um, the praying and remembering the ancestors. What's this room? Probably the shower, toilet area. But uh, I have a good feeling this is Ho Chi Minh's uh, 
home where he stayed. And there's no one here, just me. Me and the locusts. You can hear all the locusts out there in the forest. And um, over here is uh, some information in Vietnamese that I have no idea what it means. But I have a feeling that uh, this is where he stayed for like a month or so. And then um, up here, guys, there's a sign that says Border Belt. So the Chinese border is right past here, believe it or not. I'll give you guys a closer look at that sign. I mean, this is how easy it is for people to come into Vietnam. You just got to come down these stairs and you're in here. There's no guards, no no one around. There we go. Border belt. I'm going to just check the map just to see if it is. So we're here and up there is the border, the white line. See that white line? I'm down here and the white line is the border into China. Ah. Anyway, we're going to head back down. I think there's a cave that we can check out where Ho Chi Minh also stayed for a little while but it's a good walk man good walk just that uh, you got to put up with the heat and the mozzies all right guys as you can see we have made it here to Ho Chi Minh's cave this is the cave where he stayed at when he came from China back into Vietnam so he left in 1911 to head over to Paris France and then he must have come back through Asia through China in uh, 1941 and he stepped back into Vietnam and this is the first area where he stepped back into so historically he stayed at this cave and you can see down into the cave itself they've got a light down there I'm not sure if you can get down there looks like you can't get down there but um, he stayed in this cave you can see the bottom of the cave looks pretty awesome man Damn, look at all those uh, rocks in there. So that's the cave that Ho Chi Minh stayed in. And this is the uh, environment. You can see their tree hanging just onto the cliff there of the rock face. And the fauna and flora. And you've got to be careful around this area. It's areas like this where there are black scorpions and snakes. Lots of black scorpions and snakes around here. So if you do come to this area, be very, very careful, guys. And I recommend to bring a first aid kit just in case you fall over. But um, historically, this is where he came. And uh, you saw the Chinese border just a little way up. And uh, I mean, it's easy for people to come from China into Vietnam. Man. It's easy and crazy. And this is the plaque. I don't know what it says, Hong Kok Ba, whatever that means, but it's got a date there, 28th of January 1941, so I'm thinking that's the actual date he came here. I don't know how they know that, but maybe because he told them. Anyway, let us head back down the mountain. Check out all these stairs, cheeky little stairs, they've cut grooves into them. I think the grooves are there so that um, when it rains it's not slippery. You can grip. But it is quite steep. And it goes down into the lush jungle, lush forest, down to the riverside. You can hear the river. Don't know what this means, but uh, we'll go and have a look. It's probably something to do with the river. Look at that beautiful turquoise water. I wonder what that means. Some kind of plaque. It's got Ho Chi Minh's name on there. 
Look at the clarity of that water, guys. Damn, I'd love to just jump in there for a swim. You know what I mean? So we need to get to the other side. So I think we can walk up these stairs and walk around and then get to the other side that way. So we've come along the pathway up the top here. The river's down there and we're heading to the other side. And I think this loops around and goes back to where we first got dropped off. That's the other side where we were. Let's go and check out what's down here. What is going on down here next to the beautiful blue turquoise water on the river? I wonder what that means. Oh, this is where he probably ate. Looks like a seat. Looks like the uh, table he made in a seat. So you could uh, cook, eat, write, I guess. I wonder if the water comes up here um, in full wet season. Not sure what that means. Let's check out the friendly butterfly. It's hanging around my bag. Look how beautiful that butterfly is. Hey mate. What's going on? Check out these tree stump things guys. They're actually rubbish bins. I've seen a number of them around the park. It's a pretty cool idea. Right next to this beautiful river. Some guy over here. He must be getting fish. There's the bridge over there that we came over on the other side. Check out those mountains, how high they are. The Chinese border just behind the mountain. Guys, that looks like that looks like watercress right there. I'm sure that's watercress. Used to go get uh, watercress with my mum back in New Zealand along the rivers and creeks. I wonder if they know that it's watercress. Good to eat. Watercress is good for the eyes. What are they doing here? Weeding. Looks like they're weeding. Hello. <laughs> Hard working woman. That's why you gotta get you, yourself a uh, a wife, guys, from Vietnam. Hard working, loyal, too much. In Maori, back in New Zealand, we say too meke. Means uh. Awesome. All right, we've got our uh, golf cart guy. I think he's asleep. Let's see if we can uh, hitch a ride back. Hello. Okay. <laughs> These are electric uh, carts, and uh, usually on top uh, solar panels, so they're all solar powered. And you see them around the. Uh, the tourist destinations around the place. Got people picnicking and swimming. All the locals. Must be uh, must be the local waterhole where they can go swimming. 
Look out of the way chickens. You guys will be squash chickens. Not fried chickens. Ro road fried chickens. These gardens, Hakpo. Check in Hakpo. I wonder what that is. Oh, I think it's closed, guys. The temple up there. The temple is closed, unfortunately. But that's all good. At least we saw um, some of the main things um, here at Pakpo to do with Ho Chi Minh and the uh, historical significance and the um, the sites of significance as well. Right next to the Chinese border. So back in the day, he must have like come through China. He must have been tired. As soon as he got into Vietnam, it was like, I've made it back to my home country. I'm just going to relax for a month, write some poetry, strategize how I can um, kick out the French. And pretty much that's what he did. He kicked the French out, gained back um, Vietnam's independence. And that's why he's praised as the uh, saviour, the saviour of Vietnam. I'm still the only person here. Whew. Anyway, we're back here. Alright guys, it has been an awesome afternoon checking out Pak Bo and some of Ho Chi Minh's significant sites. Really awesome, uh, chillaxing next to that river and doing a little bit of walk around the forest as well. I'm going to head back to Kao Bang Town and chillax and uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the next video. Experience the journey, inspire others, live life guys.